Hey guys and welcome to today's video where we are going to be talking about everything wrong with Kim Kardashian's makeup brand KKW Beauty. So before we start make sure you subscribe down below with notifications on so you don't miss an upload and be sure to leave a like on this video if you do go on to enjoy it. So KKW Beauty was launched in June 2017 by Kim Kardashian following the success of her sister Kylie's makeup brand Kylie Cosmetics which had been launched in 2015 and sold out almost every launch for the first few years. So the Kardashians as a family would never pass up an opportunity to make some extra money. So when it appeared that makeup was the new profitable in thing, then it wasn't a surprise when Kim announced that she was also going to be starting a makeup brand. Before launching her own brand, Kim did a collaboration with Kylie Cosmetics, which was mega successful, sold out straight away, which supposedly generated 13 and a half million dollars in sales of just those four cream lipsticks which would have only provided kind of more signal to Kim that starting a makeup line was going to be a very profitable thing for her to do because clearly people are interested in buying makeup with her name on. So Kim was known for always having a very sharp chiseled makeup look the same way Kylie was always known for overlining her lips so it wasn't a surprise when she decided to launch KKW Beauty in June 2017 with a series of contour and highlight kits which sold out almost immediately and supposedly generated 14.4 million dollars. So this was not actually Kim's first attempt to break the makeup world because Kim, Chloe, and Courtney had launched a brand called Chroma Beauty in 2012, although it was in stores for less than a year before it was pulled. So it was hit with copyright infringement lawsuits from another brand called Chroma Beauty, which the Kardashians did actually win, but the products themselves just like weren't very good. So people weren't buying them. And so they ended up getting pulled off the store shelves anyway. So now we have a little bit of background on the brand and how it came to be. Let's talk about some of the problems with it. So I've said that Kim's first launch was a success in terms of sales, which obviously was her highlight and contour kits, but they did not come without controversy. So it seemed as if Kim was trying to make something kind of new and exciting in the same way that Kylie was with her lip kits, which were a massive hit. And so she went for these jewel ended contour sticks with a matching jewel ended brush and sponge to apply them. And the problem was that even with the specific tools that were sent out for use with these products, these products would not budge. Once they were on your skin, they were there to stay wherever you put them and blending was a bit of a nightmare. So if you watch reviews of this product, everyone has the same complaint, which is that the product dries on the skin so fast that it's impossible to then blend it out afterwards and you can see exactly where you put it. And remember, 2017 was the age of contour and highlight and people would have like big chunks of white concealer here and then thick lines of contour here. So if you can't blend that out, it doesn't look great. So Kim was known as like the queen of contouring. So people were expecting her to put out the best contour product on the market. And they were extremely disappointed with how unusable her products were because they refused to blend at all. Like no one wants to use something that they have to spend 10 minutes like bashing their face to try and get it to blend out to at least look slightly wearable when they could just buy a cheaper alternative that works normally and these kits were not cheap so for any for them to be so difficult to work with just kind of made them unworthy of the price tag and anyone who bought them would be unlikely to rebuy them because unless there was some formula change that would make them workable so people also rolled down the sticks to see exactly how much product was in them and were again very disappointed with the price to product ratio. The amount of product inside the stick was minimal and it was not worth the $18 price tag per stick for 2.2 grams of product which works out at $8.18 per gram. And if the product was better performing, it would maybe justify the price, but unfortunately it, like, it just wasn't good. And compared to the for example, $11 NYX contour and highlight sticks, which had more product and blended like they were supposed to, this just seemed unreasonably expensive for what you were actually getting. The full kit of a contour stick, highlight stick, and the brush was $48 plus shipping, which was not justified by what was in the products. And even though the launch sold out, it wasn't the best start for the brand because 
a lot of the reviews, especially those from large influencers with big audiences, were negative. And multiple of these reviews also showed the contour and highlight sticks breaking in like the first use, just from someone applying pressure to them, which is not a sign of a well-made product. Like you don't expect to use something for the first time and have it snap. And this just added to the growing list of problems that people were having with this particular product. And the sponge also seemed to kind of absorb any of the product that was not dried on the skin. So rather than blending it out, it was just taking it off essentially. So it didn't seem like anyone had put the effort in to make these products good because the sticks didn't work well, they weren't very sturdy, and the blending tools just absorbed the product rather than spreading it around the area that they were supposed to. So none of these products performed in the way that they were expected to. And it just seemed like no one had put any thought into this launch. No one had taken the time to make a cohesive set of products and tools that would complement each other. And it just seemed like Kim had told an intern with no knowledge of makeup to make a contour stick and this was what they'd come up with in like an afternoon and they'd just gone with that. Like it didn't seem like anyone who knew anything about makeup had actually tried to make this good because Kim Kardashian is a multi-millionaire. She has so much money that she could have put into this and instead she came out with something that just didn't perform well at all that was being outclassed by like $10 products when it cost $48. And another big problem for this launch was the promotional material for it. So in the first ever reveal photo for the launch, Kim looked heavily edited and her skin looked questionably darker than it is normally. Rightfully, people were questioning how her skin suddenly got like four shades deeper overnight and accused her of wearing blackface. And Kim responded saying like she wasn't trying to offend every anyone, she was just very tanned in this photo shoot and she'd shown the photos to a ton of business people and to her family and no one had brought this to atten her attention but that she didn't want to hurt anyone so the necessary adjustments would be made to the photos. Honestly, I don't know why she would have expected her family or anyone connected to them to notice that there was blackface here because they are known for blackfishing and clearly no one in their personal lives is calling them out for it because they keep doing it so i don't know how she expected them to look at these photos and notice that knowing that they blackfish all the time anyway but i just don't know how she looked at these photos and then looked at other photos of herself and thought yeah i look the same because clearly she didn't her skin was so much deeper so i don't know how she didn't pick up on that and know that people were going to notice that and I don't know if this was intentional. Kim does not have the best history of not recognising where she's appropriating another culture. For example, she tried to name her skincare brand Kimono. So she may have just been completely ignorant, but that is not an excuse. If everyone around her thought this photo was okay, then clearly she needs to hire a diversity officer because they are not doing their jobs properly. So all of this just kind of added up to make a completely disastrous first launch because no one wants to launch a brand and immediately have it surrounded by drama and not even have a product that can stand on its own two feet to circumvent the drama. Like, the products were bad, the promotion was bad, and when your brand has nothing to fall back on to show that you can make good products and you do deserve another chance, it's pretty difficult to come back from that. There were also complaints about the packaging that the products were coming in because with Kylie Cosmetics, for example, you got a branded box that all of your products would be contained within to be protected when they're being shipped. Whereas with KKW Beauty, you would get a flimsy like branded plastic bag containing cream products, which as we already know, were liable to break very easily. Like did no one think this through at all? Like if you're gonna make a fragile product, don't put it in a plastic bag to ship it because it's just going to break. And people were a bit miffed at this because, like I said, Kim is so rich. She had so much money that she could have put into this brand and yet everything just looked cheap. There was no luxury experience when receiving or using the products. It felt like you were opening something from a drugstore brand. Like, the contour kit was vacuum wrapped. Kim, what were you thinking? Why did you think that appropriate packaging for a $50 product was to just vacuum wrap it and then put it in a pink plastic bag? Like, did no one look at this and think, we're gonna get complaints about this because we're charging people $50 plus $7 for shipping when the shipping package is a plastic bag. Mind blowing. I don't understand how no one pointed this out. And Kim's collaboration with Kylie was the same price as the contour kit and yet the packaging was so much better. The way that the lipsticks were laid out made it look like a luxury product. The box was well made, it was sturdy, the products were well contained and yet here in Kim's own brand everything was just like 
AliExpress quality. And the plastic bag that you got the contour kits in did not make it seem like a $50 product. The box that the lipsticks were in, that felt like a $50 product, but this kind of plastic flimsy packaging, that felt like you were buying something from the drugstore when you were actually spending $50 on it, which is a lot of money. And following the contour kits, Kim decided to expand into highlighters with her ultralight beams, which would have looked great if the packaging was not the exact same as the Stila liquid eyeshadows. Like the tube was the same, the only difference was the colour of the lid. And because the liquid eyeshadows are Stila's like staple product, that's the product that everyone goes to Stila for, of course people are going to pick up on this. And I just don't understand why they keep having these issues with packaging like can you not think of something original like the shape of the contour sticks and the brushes and all of that that packaging is original so why could you not have just thought of like a box to put that in and then kind of carried that theme on with the new products like why would you take such obvious inspiration from another brand why would you completely copy their packaging knowing that people are going to pick up on it it just doesn't make any sense to me so not only was kim's packaging cheap it was also unoriginal and to make things worse she then came out with a line of bullet lipsticks with plastic packaging that literally looked like it had been bought in bulk from aliexpress like seriously whoever is in charge or whoever was in charge of kkw packaging from 2017 to 2018 needed to be fired because they clearly did not know what they were doing there is no way that they looked at this and thought that is a good way to package a 22 dollar lipstick if customers are paying mid to high end prices for a product they do not want the same packaging as the elf two dollar lipsticks they do not want clear plastic plastic tube packaging that you can buy in bulk from whole re wholesale retailers they want something that feels authentic to the brand and something that feels luxurious to match the price that they're paying for their product they do not want an elf dupe and apparently the disastrous release of the first lot of contour products did not stall kim because for her second launch she decided that she was going to put out contour palettes with two highlighter shades a bronzer shade and a contour shade and can i just say these palettes made no sense because the bronzer shade was warm and the contour shade was cool which I don't understand how you would mix those two like surely when you put them on they're going to look weird together because they have different undertones like why would you not make a warm toned palette and then a cool toned palette and then a neutral palette like that just doesn't make sense to me why you would try and put them together when they clearly don't match but anyway aside from like my own qualms with it the main problem was that they were chalky as hell kim did a product reveal on her snapchat similar to how kylie used to reveal all of her products on snapchat by like swatching it on her arm honestly I just don't know why Kim posted these videos like why did she look at this and think like this is great promotion for my product because it made the products look so bad like the highlighters were bright white like pure chalk and then the bronzer and contour shades just like barely showed up like she's wiping on her arm saying oh my god guys this is so good and then you can't even see it and it's like are you watching the same video as me because I'm not seeing what you're seeing and first of all, no one wants to make themselves look grey with their contour in the first place. And second of all, people want to actually be able to see their contour, even if it is grey, if they're paying that much money for it. So why would you want to show the products to be practically invisible? Like, it looked patchy when it did show up. And I just want to know how she managed to curate such a bright highlighter and such a bad bronzer. Like, did you just give up halfway through? Like, you made the formula for the first two shades and then just decided to sack off the second two and take whatever the lab gave you. I just don't get it how they made, like, such a bright, well-pigmented highlighter. But when it came to the bronzer and the contour, there was, like, nothing there. Dark Kit also looked so chalky. There is no way that anyone with an actual dark skin tone was going to be able to make that work without it looking grey. So I'm sorry, I just don't understand what they were thinking when they did this. And why does it just seem like Kim does not care about how good that her products are? Like she's just had a terrible first launch and this is her second chance to show people that her brand is actually something to be taken seriously and it is a luxury brand and it is deserving of the price. And she's putting out something this bad. She's promoting it and showing it to be bad. Like, that's not going to get you sales. That's going to get people to not buy your products. Like, I don't know if she's just completely clueless about, like, the whole makeup industry and she just doesn't understand how it works. But, like, this woman has so much money. Why is she making products that are this bad? But, again... 
Kim continued unabashed and released even more cheap products in her liquid and pan concealers, the shade range of which was absolutely abysmal. So the powder contour kits did not have a great shade range. The darker kit looked like it would 100% show up as pure ash on any dark skin tone, but this... This was a new level, so the darkest shade of the pan concealer is pure orange. Like, I'm not kidding, it was just orange. There's no tint of brown in there, it is just pure orange. And Kim always labels things in four sections, so there's light, medium, dark, and deep dark, when a more accurate description of these concealers would be ultra white, white, medium, and medium dark, because there is no way those deep dark concealers were working on a deep dark skin tone. Like, number 13, which was the first in the deep dark section, would work on a medium to dark skin tone and look ridiculous on a deep dark skin tone. These concealers are not made for the people that you're saying that they are. It felt like they wanted to label their products to make it seem like they're making an effort to be inclusive, but when the products themselves don't match the description, those descriptions mean nothing. Like someone with a deep dark skin tone is not gonna buy your concealer because you've labeled it deep dark. They're gonna buy it because it actually matches their skin tone. There was also a small diversity scandal talking about like shade ranges and inclusivity. At the end of 2017, over a casting call for women in LA to be part of a campaign and fans were annoyed that they had specifically asked for women only when Kim was always talking about how she wants her brand to be inclusive for everyone, you know, women, men, non-binary people and then she only wants women to be involved in her advertising. Her fans were a little bit upset that like only half the people she was saying she wanted her makeup to be made for were actually able to be part of her campaigns. And this never really caused like any big issue. This was just kind of a minor scandal. Although when you search like KKW promotion or KKW beauty campaign or whatever into Google, there are not any photos featuring men wearing makeup. So it seems like nothing actually changed after this and she has only used women in her promotional photos but she never suffered much backlash for it so i guess people just don't think it's that big of a deal a lot of beauty brands even nowadays don't use men in their promotion photos just because they're kind of stuck in their ways that it should be women only kkw beauty hasn't suffered at all for this and i don't know if i've just kind of missed the promotions but so far i think the only photo i could find that had a man in it in a promotion was the collaboration between kkw beauty and makeup by mario so there wasn't really any major controversies with the brand from the launch of the concealers until mid 2019 there was a bit of murmuring about the makeup by mario palette because it looked very similar to kylie's royal peach palette and people were accusing kim of copying her but let's be honest pretty much every brand now has released a neutral palette with a pop of blue or a pop of pink or something like that because they think it makes it like new and exciting when really it just like doesn't but th that's what people were saying was that it looks very similar to Kylie's palette although most brands have a palette that looks something like that think like Morphe for example has how many 35 35O palettes and the only thing separating them is a pop of colour in the third one. She did get back into the spotlight though with the launch of the Body Foundation in July 2019. So some people disagreed with the launch of the product altogether, calling it money grabbing and a weird choice considering that to this day there is still no KKW face foundation so it seemed like it was kind of an odd choice to go for body foundation before face foundation. Whilst others were grateful that Kim was putting out a product that was aimed at other sufferers of visible skin conditions like hers. So Kim has been open about her struggle with psoriasis since 2007 and claimed that this body foundation was supposed to help others like her feel more confident by being able to cover up any kind of visible patchiness or pigmentation in their skin that they were insecure about. Honestly, I like this idea. I like that Kim has made a product that feels tailored to her. She'd always struggled with that insecurity and so she was making a product to fix it the same way that Kylie always struggled with insecurity about her lips. So she made a lip kit so people could overline their lips. So if they had that insecurity, they could make their lips look bigger without having to search for matching lipstick and lip liner. Like this product felt like it was authentically Kim. It didn't feel like she was just putting something out for the sake of putting it out. It felt like that was actual thought that went into this. It felt a lot more new and kind of innovative than her other products. A lot of the others just kind of felt like they were just putting products out for the sake of putting products out and there wasn't much thought that went into them. Whereas this one, it felt like there was thought that went into it and it was thought that came from Kim rather than just someone on her marketing team. 
and there was a slight hiccup with the promotion where Kim decided to post a video of her using it to cover up sunburn and saying like look how great the foundation is it can cover up sunburn and people were quick to point out that actually putting makeup over sunburn is not a good idea it can be quite damaging to the skin it can irritate it and make it worse but this wasn't really a huge issue like is Kim really known for being the most aware of what she's doing? No, I think this is like the thing that she's done to worry about the least, but there wasn't really any massive issue about this. The people who the product were made for seemed happy with it, and so you can't really complain. There was another, or there is another ongoing bump in the road uh, in 2020 when KKW decided to do the same as Kylie Cosmetics and sell some of their shares to the brand Coty. The problem with this was that KKW, like Kylie Cosmetics, had worked with Seed Beauty to create their brand and Seed Beauty did not like Coty having access and control over these two brands. So Seed Beauty filed a civil lawsuit against KKW Beauty in California in June 2020 over the protection of trade secrets. Essentially, they wanted to protect anything that they had given KKW Beauty to get it off the ground, aka formulas, business models, etc., from being accessed by Coty once they acquired shares in the company. So in the file for the suit, Seed Beauty claimed that KKW Beauty had provided confidential information to Coty, which had broken the terms of contract between the brand and the manufacturer. And there's not a huge amount of information concerning what actually happened in the lawsuit, apart from that KKW, Kylie and Seed Beauty and get all engaged in arbitration and came out with a settlement with Seed Beauty filing for dismissal of the case on August 3rd, 2021. And it seems that Seed Beauty is concerned that Coty may be trying to copy their business model and their enterprise. And so the acquisition of shares in two of Seed Beauty's three big companies, the other one being Colourpop, was a big red flag to them. And so they wanted to prevent any of their formulas, operations, business models, or anything else that may be of use in Coty's competition with them from being used by this other brand. And the lawsuit seemed to be less of an issue with KQW Beauty and more of a rivalry between the two companies who happen to be competing over KKW Beauty, but it's still not good publicity to have a lawsuit filed against your brand for breaking a contract. However, right before Seed Beauty did file for dismissal, KKW Beauty actually got involved in a second lawsuit, this time over a trademark that it was attempting to file. So KKW Beauty was given its name because obviously Kim's full name was Kim Kardashian West, but now that she is no longer with Kanye West, she is trying to change the name of that brand to remove the West. And she has decided that she wants to call her brand SKKN Beauty. I'm not sure what that stands for, but she attempted to file a trademark for that name, but has been hit with a de cease and desist because supposedly another brand has been operating under the name SKKN Plus for a number of years before this. This name supposedly is already trademarked by Beauty Concepts LLC, who've been offering skincare and salon services under this trademark, and so the products that KKW Beauty is offering, while they're not the same, they're in the same kind of sphere, so they don't want another beauty brand being able to use that same name and potentially take away from their business. There is a little bit more grey area for speculation in this lawsuit because supposedly the filing that Kim made was made before the filing from Beauty Concepts LLC, despite Beauty Concepts operating under the SKKN Plus name for years prior to this, they just never legally trademarked it. And apparently T Kim and her team had obtained the at SKKN social media handles and the SKKN.com website handle in December 2020, which was before Beauty Concepts filed for this trademark. So Kim's lawyers made a statement saying that while they don't want to harm a small business, their trademark application had not been anything illegal. They'd not done anything underhanded or anything against the law and therefore they were going to proceed with it and that they were disappointed that the owner of Beauty Concepts had shown the cease and desist letter to TMZ because then it brought this lawsuit into the public eye when it didn't need to be. This is still a very new case. The article that I was reading about it was dated July 30th, 2021, so it's only a month old, but it remains to be seen whether Kim will still be able to change the name of her brand or not. It seems to me they haven't done anything illegal because if SKKN is not trademarked, I don't know what the rules are in the US about how much leverage operating under that brand name will give Beauty Concepts LLC in terms of saying 
you can't trademark it because we've been operating under this name for however many years. I don't know whether it's just purely if it's not trademarked, you can have it or whether that's going to make a difference at all. I'm not very clued up on American law. So even if KKW Beauty does not manage to change its name, it does seem like they're looking to rebrand anyway. So the entire website has been cleared apart from a message on the homepage, which reads, we're currently working on a more modern, elevated, sustainable brand and customer experience the way Kim has always envisioned. Thank you so much for being on this incredible journey with us. We promise we won't be gone for too long. Since you'll probably need some KKW Beauty in your life, select products are available for a limited time at Ulta. And this was a pretty out of the blue move. Like the brand hadn't been particularly progressing as a brand. They'd just been kind of putting out more and more neutral collections and kind of expanding their products, but they hadn't shown any signs of planning to stop altogether or planning to stop sales so people were a little bit surprised by this because now you can't buy any of their products on their website obviously kylie recently rebranded kylie cosmetics by changing the formulas and the packaging and this was likely as a result of no longer being able to use the formula that c beauty gave them because it was trademarked or it was considered a trade secret so it may be that kkw beauty has run into the same problem where their formulas need to be changed now that they are under coty management rather than c beauty because otherwise they're infringing trade secrets and since they do say in their message that they're looking to be a more sustainable brand and kylie's big selling point for her new formula that it was that it was vegan and cruelty free it is possible that they are also currently in the process of reformulating everything and they're going to go for the same angle however the fact that they're seemingly pulling all of their products out of stores as well as off their website made me think that maybe they're doing something a bit more drastic than what kylie did rather than just tweaking the formulas maybe they're looking at re branding completely and going for a completely different look or angle with their products obviously they've been very focused on like base products rather than like eyeshadows or lipsticks or whatever like their main focus was on contouring concealing etc and that's not really the trend anymore people don't want really stark concealer anymore people don't want really stark contour so it is possible that they're looking to kind of change up their products a bit to be a bit more with the trend and I would hope that Kim is taking the time to improve her packaging and make it feel more luxurious considering the price of her product and working on her formulas to make sure that whatever they do put out as like a relaunch performs better than what they've put out currently because while some things like there's no issue with them I haven't seen anyone particularly praise it and say that oh my god this is like the best thing ever I haven't seen anyone really rave about it or include a KKW product in like a favorites video or a favorites makeup tutorial like people just don't really talk about the brand that much and I don't know if that's just because big influencers aren't talking about them and like there's tons of non-influencer people who use the brand and love it but I haven't seen any hype surround them since the problems with the first launch they just haven't seemed to have really recovered from that like while they've still sold a lot of products there's not been any hype around them no one's been like ridiculously excited about it like they were for like the first two years of Kylie Cosmetics they just haven't managed to maintain any excitement around their brand because everything that they put out just feels like the same collection over and over again but for now, we kind of just play the waiting game and knowing my luck, they will probably relaunch and have a ton of scandals in the week before I post this video. This is being pre-filmed, as you can probably tell by the fact that I said that this lawsuit has only been going on for a month. This is pre-filmed before I go back to uni. So I'm guessing that right before I post it, Kim's going to decide to relaunch her website, relaunch her brand, and there's going to be so much more to talk about and I will have missed it all because I pre-filmed rather than doing it at the time, which is fun for me, but we'll just have to wait and see. For now, touch wood, that is everything that I have to say about KKW Beauty and everything wrong with them, all the scandals they've been in, and we'll just have to wait and see what happens when they rebrand. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did enjoy them, be sure to leave a like down below, leave a comment with any thoughts that you might have and subscribe to see more videos like this. I will leave my Kylie Cosmetics video and my other Everything Wrong With in the description and in the top corner in a playlist if you want to go and watch those. And I will hopefully see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.